Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Brian Thatcher, and welcome to Mercy Unbound. It's a series that aims to prov provide hope, an avenue for healing, and one that will help you understand and then live the great mercy of God. With me today, I have Michael and Ma Maureen Fitzgerald from Pennsylvania, and I've asked her to be on the show today to share with us her miraculous story of healing of terminal liver cancer. Being a liver specialist, I found that very fascinating. And um, they made a pilgrimage to Medjugorje. Maureen was healed when the medical treatments had failed. And, um, you know, Catholics often get beat up because we pray to Mary, ask for her intercession. And yet people don't have a problem asking their friend or cousin, whomever, to pray for a sick loved one. And uh, we believe in the communion of saints. We're one big family, the church of Jesus Christ, who's the head, and he's the healer. Um, Mary is a great intercessor, just as she was at Cana. And um, it's an interesting story, not only Maureen's problem, but husband Michael here has had his own health problems. So before we get into Maureen's issues, Michael, tell us a little bit about your own health st status. <clears throat> about three years ago, uh, I had a routine colonoscopy, at which point they found two tumors in my colon. And um, basically, it took about six weeks for them to figure out the type of cancer I had. I had a fibrous sarcoma. And the fascinating thing about it was the University of Pennsylvania did the original pathology and they sent it up to Sloan Kettering and neither Penn nor Sloan Kettering had ever seen my type of cancer in the colon before. And the surgeon that did my work sent it, the information down to Anderson in Texas and they never heard of my sarcoma in the colon before. So I basically sitting there going, I have absolutely no idea why this happened, but all the doctors are looking at me saying, we've never seen this before. Uh, the ultimate treatment, uh, they told me that chemotherapy and radiation do not work on the sarcoma. And the only thing that they could offer was surgery to remove it. And I'm under surveillance uh, with imaging every three to six months to see if it comes back. If it does come back, the only option they offer me is more surgery. And thank God in three years, I have not had a recurrence. Well, that's a most unusual situation, I can tell you as a GI doctor. Maureen, you're a retired nurse, so you're medically savvy. When did you first start to realize things weren't right or what led you to seek medical attention to begin with? Uh, actually, it was just that I had a stomach ache, uh, indigestion, uh, went to my family doctor and, um, and the family doctor referred me to the GI specialist um, at that time. He had also ordered a test uh, to be done, which they did. And uh, that's why they sent me to the GI specialist. Uh, the GI specialist decided that I was, I had to get an MRI done. And we did not know why, because we didn't really have the results of that first test. Uh, we went into the emergency room because that was the only place they could do that MRI that night. And um, I ended up April 2nd, 3rd of this year uh, being in the hospital uh, to get the MRIs and was uh, told by the GI specialist uh, who knelt at my bed and held my hands and started crying that I had advanced cancer of the liver throughout my liver and through my portal vein, and that I only had three months to live if I was lucky. And he was very sorry. And um, that's where the journey of hope for us began because we were really in shock uh, because all I had was a stomach ache. Um, but I have since found out that Apparently, um, much like ovarian cancer, uh, liver cancer um, is being found out later in its uh, stages. So it's kind of a silent one. Um, and um, in the hospital, in the hospital, I met an oncologist, and he 
basically told me to get out of the area that I live in because there was no treatment at all for my type of cancer and nothing at all. So we, pr we proceeded to, um, he proceeded to make an appointment with a uh, healthcare center near us. Um, and they had 60 doctors that looked at my uh, records. <clears throat> and the um, bottom line was they called us back on Good Friday, right before Easter uh, to basically tell us that uh, they were just gonna send me back home. There was no hope. And I just, um, I think that triggered something in my soul and my heart because, you know, I, I really wanted to be filled with hope and um, the opposite was going on. And um, it was at this point that, you know, we were um, then looking to a second opinion. And uh, the second opinion uh, was uh, one that they could try to treat me with something new called immunotherapy. So uh, I went through uh, two bouts of immunotherapy treatment. Um, the first one, I did have a little um, side effects from my skin, but the second one landed me in the hospital. To Can the I point jump that in, I, Maureen? Sure. There's a tumor marker for liver cancer, alpha feta protein. What was your num numbers before starting immunotherapy? Uh, they were running anywhere from 8,000 uh, to 5,000, but it was 8,000 when I got to the second treatment center. And at that point, um, my liver enzymes were astronomical. They were like 1,200, 1,300. Um, they were, they had never really seen a case that high, uh, they told us, but they were going to aggressively try to treat me. And um with the first, uh, um, after the second treatment, my body um, reacted uh, to it in May 31st. I ended up in the hospital uh, in June and they told Michael that they weren't sure if they, I was gonna get out alive. And um, I had so many people at this point, uh, I was part of a rosary group. My friends, my family had uh, friends that were in rosary groups and um, it was very hopeful because everybody was pointing to the Blessed Mother, Our Lady. Uh, some people were picking saints, but mostly everybody was in rosary groups praying for our family and for a better outcome than what the doctors were choosing to tell us what was going on. And um, I just felt that the Holy Spirit was inspiring me to just feel very hopeful that, that it was going to be um, a journey. But as the journey went on, I felt that God was giving me the grace to understand that I had to surrender to him. It was his will and whatever he felt was best for me was going to happen. <clears throat> and I must say, um, being of Irish descent, that's not an easy task to do with my soul at times. Um, I did a, a, a surrender novena for four weeks straight. Uh, and I, I did, um, feel that I, I had, um, been blessed with the grace to surrender to God. Um, but well, at the same me, time, Maureen, let me jump in here because it's important. I want to clarify. So you had a alpha feed of protein off the wall. I've never seen one that hot. And then you had your first immunosuppressive therapy. Do you remember what the numbers went down to at that point after the first round? Uh, they were, uh, I'm not sure the first round, but the second round uh, did take them down to about a thousand. So still markedly elevated. And yes, normal, yes. You know. Right, okay. right. And the second treatment, I did have a reaction uh, <clears throat> during the treatment. And then I ended up in the hospital in June. Um, and they <clears throat> told me that my immune system had over responded and it was actually attacking my heart, my eyes, my. Um, besides my liver and my neurological system. So I was really, um, it was kind of like, we, we can't give you any more immunotherapy. So that, that was it for that round, huh? Yeah, that was it for that plan of treatment and also for the fact that um, they were clearly trying to keep me alive while I was in there in June. And um, I don't even remember the first couple of days, but Michael said that they, coming to him and telling him things were kind of this way, that way. But as I came out of it, um, I, you know, felt like 
you know, uh, I need to just go home and, and um, think this through. And they had decided that because I had a portal vein tumor also, and that was why I was not allowed to get any kind of um, surgery. surgery or transplant. I had a tumor mm -hmm. there. They wanted to do a procedure on me. And so they decided to, one of the parts of the procedure was to give me an MRI of my liver again and with dye. And they wanted to pre-medicate me with prednisone. I was already on mega doses. I'm talking about like 190 milligrams three times a day, which was unbelievable. And, um, and, and, and those side effects um, in July from what happened was the radiologist actually overdosed me on the prednisone, gave me the incorrect dose. Um, instead of 140, I had 280 milligrams. And by that weekend, I had gone downhill, ended up back in the hospital and um, I couldn't even walk. My legs wouldn't work. Uh, the doctors were putting needles in my calves and I couldn't feel a thing. I couldn't even recognize my legs um, because the edema was so severe. I didn't even see my ankles. So, and, so um, let me let me ask you then. It's obviously you're going downhill. Yes. Were they, were they checking alpha feta protein levels at that time, or they stopped doing that? Uh, they were still checking them, and some were running like, like six hundred, uh, four hundred, as I remember from you know, my, my documentation and stuff like that. So they were still elevated because less than, um, less than three is normal to give you what normal is for alpha feta protein. And so, uh, basically in July, while I was in the hospital, I, they also did spinal tap and they did a spinal MRI and they found out that I now had a tumor in my spine, as well as all the tumors that were in my liver, the biggest being seven centimeters. But um, it was interesting because the date that triggered for me was July 15th. I was in the hospital room and all these doctors were there. And uh, I just remember the coldness of the first group telling me that I was going to be um, gone by three months and that it would be, and I remembered that date as being July 9th. And I, I just, the Holy Spirit just came into me and all these doctors were there and I I just looked at my husband and I just went, when I saw the calendar and he said, what do you mean? I said, he says, what, what's wrong? Are you okay? I said, you know what? I basically, you know, God's in, God's in command of this because I beat it. We're, you know, I am alive. It's July 15th. So, so I looked at the doctors and I said, you know, I said, doctors and you who are studying to be doctors, I said, it is something that when we have a divine physician and he's in charge and then, it, and then of course we come to you for help, but, but you have to always give people hope. And I didn't even know per se where it was coming from, but I do know that it was from the Holy spirit because it just, I just couldn't help, but, but say it and exclaim it out. And, and some doctors smiled at me and some kind of looked at me like, okay, but um, at any rate, um, the journey of hope continued. And I felt like I got a booster shot that day that yes, God had, had better plans in this. And there were so many people that started uh, telling me that their prayer groups, there were prayer groups in the Philippines because the relatives lived there or in Canada or in Ireland, uh, some as far as underground China, uh, Catholics were praying the rosary. Uh, it was very humbling uh, to know that I had so many people praying for me. Um, and I kept thinking, I wonder what it looked like in heaven with the, uh, with our blessed mother and Jesus and the angel answering the phone saying, it's this Maureen Fitzgerald again, people keep praying for her. And, uh, yeah, so, so. she was so bad in her two hospitalizations that I thought she was going to die. And I even kept asking the doctors, is she going to die? Um, and of course I, I, I got silence from them. Uh, that's how bad she was. Yeah. So when we came home in July, I, um, at that time, then I came out of the hospital with no plan for anything on treatment of my cancer. I was not walking. I had problems with my vision because the prednisone had taken out my right, right eye vision. <clears throat> I found out that my heart had been attacked and, um, 
well, I already had a heart problem before, but now it had caused problems with my left ventricle. And my, um, uh, it was my eyes, my legs, I, I couldn't walk. I um, basically, I the neurologist told me to, the only part that I could walk on was the back of my heels. So I had to try to walk on my heels to get into a wheelchair to get out of the hospital. And um, I went back to my family doctor right away uh, within a couple of days after we got home uh, because uh, I had a long-term relationship 20 some years ago into this doctor and I knew he was a Christian man. And I just told him that, you know, I believe that God had a plan for me and that he was part of it. And um, at this point in time, we, I was so weakened, I needed to be strengthened. And so he brought in a, a physical therapist. Of course, my cardiologist was involved and my end, and an endocrinologist to try to get me off the prednisone. Um, and we worked on that for um, a, a couple of months. I was, I was in PT for a total of three months, but um, the reason that that is interesting is because the physical therapist that I did work with, he had seen my legs and I was like plus four edema. I mean, I you couldn't see my ankles. And um, when I talk about the Medjugorje trip and coming back, I'll just uh, remind you of this. Um, because he was a man who's searching for God, I believe. And um, and it's just uh, been a heck of a journey because sometimes God does <clears throat> allow me to see some seeds of, of what he wants me to be talking about, which basically is, uh, you know, we, we decided um, in August, we really didn't have any kinds of plans. And I went um, to uh, three things happened, which called called us back to Medjugorje. We had been there in 1998 for the first time. And our lady called us back, we felt, because a friend of ours who had been to Medjugorje in 1998, out of the blue, sent me this picture of us on Cross Mountain. And it was our whole family because our whole family had gone at the time. And then um, my daughter got a story about a person who was healed in Medjugorje and this girl wanted to share it for hope with me. Um, and then I decided to go to confession that day at my daughter's uh, parish. And I had a young priest there who sat there and he talked to me and he's, he, you know, I was sharing about my cancer and he said, it's, I'll never forget. He said, it seems like you're, you've been doing a lot of time with the medical doctors. But he says, I think you need to spend more time with God. And I asked him to repeat it three times to me, and he did. He said, yes, you, you must spend time more time with God. And we came home that Saturday, Monday. I have a friend who um, does pilgrimages, but she's my best friend. And we had to drop something off at her. And she saw us, and she was knowing that we were my husband was upset because we hadn't, we had no plan at this point in time. And, and my family doctor was kind of suggesting that I try to find another oncologist, but I um, still wanted to get strengthened. And I also just felt like what this priest had shared with me in confession was clearly something my soul and my heart was listening to. So my friend, let me interrupt you. Uh, Marie. Said, Marie. What time of what yeah. month are we at now? We're is this August? Uh, we're now we're now yes we're now at the end of August. End and of at August. this point, okay. um, let me let me ask yeah, at this question. point. Hey, let me ask okay. Was anybody checking alpha feta protein still, or was it? You know, you know, you have no hope, and see it so long. Um, uh, they didn't check it for a, a while, and then my family doctor started rechecking it. Um, and um, uh, he was rechecking it. My heart doctor was following my, what they call BMP. I went into a, a pseudo heart failure. He called it. He said, that's why my legs were so edematous. He said, it's, he, he felt like maybe it was from the prednisone, but he said, I can't promise you because you have heart disease. So I was being followed by him every two weeks. What was, was the level? PT two times a week. Uh, the levels at that time were like still around 200, 300, as I remember, in the alpha feta protein. And so basically, my liver enzymes were still abnormal. Um, and uh, 
and my heart number was up. It was uh, in August, it was 340 for my BMP, which shows heart failure. And um, that was towards mid to end of August. And basically I, um, you know, I thought, okay, so uh, I'm in heart failure and they had all that different treatments going on. So basically, yes, uh, I had gone back to my doctor and, and he told me that my liver enzymes were starting to elevate up again. He hadn't done an alpha feed approach. No, he did do one. That's right. He did do one. And it was still like not changing the range that it was at that point. But he said, I, you know, I have a concern that you're not getting any treatment. And, and that was when I had this weekend where I went to the priest. And so that Monday, my friend, I dropped something off. Mike was there and we were, she was kind of like, you know, what are you going to be doing? And we said, we don't really have a plan. We're just, you know, praying and hoping and, uh, she says, why don't you come to Medjugorje with me? And I, we, we said, well, when are you going? And, and she said, in two weeks. Two weeks. So she was leaving September 12th for Medjugorje. Yeah. And she says, I, I can make room for you if you want to come. And we looked at each other and I just said, yes, it's, it's the Blessed Mother and it's our Lord Jesus that I need to go to at this point in time versus going to another oncologist. And um so Michael and me packed up and, and we went over with our parish priest and um, our pilgrim group to um, Medjugorje, September 12th. And um, we were there for about two or three days. I was using two canes, had my feet wrapped. Um, I had, I couldn't walk real well. People were wondering like why I was going because I was going to be able to walk the mountains. But in my hope, I felt like maybe I could walk and get somewhere on that mountain of Apparition Hill or, or Cross Mountain. And so basically I said, we'll give it a try. We'll see what happens. And so um, the day that we went to Apparition Hill, uh, there was another lady who also was disabled and we made it up to the Annunciation uh, Rosary uh, Meditation. And then our friend, she fell, uh, luckily was not injured. Her guardian angels protected her and uh, she looked at me and everybody decided, yeah, we most probably, it was not safe for us to, to be walking off completely. So we said, okay, we'll go down below and we'll do a rosary for all the rest of the group while we're, while we're there. And even though it was sad for me, because I thought that I really could make it all the way up to the top of the mm -hmm. hill, I, I, I just couldn't, but I was hopeful. And I thought, well, Mary, you know, you have a plan for me, whatever it is. And that uh, afternoon when we got back, um, my husband was resting and stuff. And I just said, you know, I feel like I'm gonna, uh, gonna go to confession over here. So I, I went and we were only like a couple blocks away from the church. And um, I took my two, I said, you know, Lord, just leave me because um, I'm here with two canes, but there's a lot of, you know, beautiful, beautiful people here who, if something happens, I fall, they'll, they'll help me. So I go and I, I walked and I went to confession. So I get in the first line and I met a man who turned around and immediately said to me, could you pray for my wife? She has advanced cancer of the of the lungs and she doesn't even smoke. And uh, I just was, I just thought, wow, <laughs> you know, what a coincidence, but there's no coincidences with God. So we started talking and and uh, said, I would pray for her. And his niece was there and she was in her thirties and we started talking about Padre Pio, of course, you're in a confession line and, and uh, she had never heard of him. And we talked about, I talked about, shared with them about Padre Pio. So uh, then the usher actually came over and said, you know, for the English speaking pilgrims, the line was so long. They said, why don't we finally got two more priests? So I went and said goodbye to them. And I went to another line because it was getting late. The Croatian mass was going to be starting soon. So, um, so I uh, ended up having confession with a priest from Ireland named Father Michael. And he basically, um, you know, we talked, he was very compassionate. And he said to me, though, at the end, he said, you know, he, he um, said, I want you to try to uh, find a Father Leon, who is here a priest. And I said, uh, Father Leon, he says, yes. He, I said, could you tell me why? And he just kind of smiled at me and he said, just tell him that I, I'm sending sending you to him and um she said you know who will know what to do she and he said uh, you know uh he was funny he kind of said why weren't you 
why don't you give it to Lourdes? You know, they have uh, hospitals and things like that. Because apparently it felt like I was in pretty bad shape with my feet wrapped and my double. And I said, you know, Mary called me here and this is where I'm supposed to be, Father. And and he uh, he said, yes. He said, so fine, Father Leon. Well, you know, there's hundreds of priests in Medjugorje. And um, uh, I talked to my parish pastor who had come with us on trip the next uh, that night and I said you know I got a I had confession with his father Michael and basically he uh told me to find father Leon I, I don't know why but you we know, didn't know who father Leon we was didn't know who he was and our parish priest kind of smiled and said you don't know who father Leon is he's in charge of the whole English speaking people their activities he talks he does talks and things like that I said, do you know what he looks like that we could just look for him? And he showed us a picture and it was kind of cute because it was kind of a back, back-sided picture back of, him, of his head. back of his head a little bit. So, <laughs> and he said to us, well, he said, actually he says, I'm going to try to, I'm going to be con celebrating tomorrow. He said, so why don't you, he says, I'll try to talk to Father Leon. He said, but he's a very busy man. He said, I don't know that you could see him. I said, well, that that's fine. Uh, you know, whatever the good Lord and Our Lady want is what's going to happen, Father. And he, he said, yes. And um, this is a priest who has been with us through our journey. He was in our back deck and able to give me communion, um, confession. confession through a glass because I at one point my immune system was so depressed. I wasn't allowed to be around anybody at all other than my husband. And and I, I chose to have my two daughters coming in and out, of course, of the house, but nobody else, my brothers and sisters couldn't come at all because I had no immune system. And so he, we had a, a good standing relationship at this point because, you know, he had gotten to know us through the summer. And so the next morning he comes running out to us after mass and he says, talk to Father Leon. And he's doing a talk at 11 o'clock at Yellow oh, Hall yeah. behind St. James Church. So he said, we're all planning to go anyhow, but he said he ha may have a minute or two. And I said, okay, Father. So we went and at 11 o'clock, we were sitting there and we were by the door because our group was more inside and I had my mask on and stuff like that because of my immune system situation. So, so Father Dan had found us towards the end and he said, you know, when you, when Father Leon gets done his talk, I'm going to grab your hand and I'll help you up to get up to see him. Well, there was thousands of people in the, in the hall and and he finished and there was a major convergence on him. And we he tried to, you know, get me up there. And I said, you know, Father, I, I don't think it's gonna happen today or maybe it will, I don't know, but it's not happening right now because the crowd's really pushing in. I was- He's on our two kings. <laughs> So, so he says, well, wait a minute, we're going to go out the side door then, which was closer to us. So we went out the side door unbeknownst to Father Leon had gone out the front door. And we almost bumped into him because he was trying to walk ahead uh, of the crowd. And Father Dan called out to him and said, this is the woman that I talked to. And it was kind of a, a gospel moment because he was walking still and he's like, come follow me. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Father Leon, I'll you know, I'm hobbling along, I'll come follow you. And he slowed down his pace. And he, and he's, he said, you know, where are your tumors? And I said, I have them in my liver, my portal vein and, and, and in my back now, my spine, my T11 going into my bone. And he says, okay. And I, I said, you know, it's funny. I said, this Irish priest told me Father Michael, and he stopped and he just went nose to nose with me. And he says, Describe him. I said, white hair, beautiful Irish brew, blue eyes, and shaky hands. He says, yes, you know, he, he has a little Parkinson's going on. He says, um, he said, what did he tell you? I said, he just said that you would know what to do if he had sent me. And he says, I do know what to do. And he said, I have to ask you a question. I said, oh, okay. And he said, can I pray over you? And I said, uh, yes, you may pray over me. Of course, Father Leon. And so he put his hands over my head and he closed his eyes and we were almost nose to nose and he was praying very deeply and I closed my eyes and I, I started feeling like a very strong heat that was entering my body from the top going down and it really stayed in my back big time and I was just thinking to myself, well, is this 
Is this what it's like, Mary? Is this what it's like, Lord? Because you're, I, I, I don't know. I think you're healing me. And I just started getting very teary eyed. And he gave me three uh, signs of the cross on my forehead with his thumb. And he, uh, he opened our eyes and he, he looked at me and he said, God bless you. And I said, you know, God bless you. Father Leon too. And with that, he, he started walking and the crowd was still pretty heavy and stuff. Mm -hmm. And my husband couldn't even get out of the hall at that time. So he wasn't with me. I was by myself and I decided I would lean against the side of the wall of the, of the yellow. Uh, I, I had stayed in the hall and our parish priest, our pastor took Maureen out to see Father yeah. Leon, but I was holding the bags and other stuff. In the hall. But then he held the, uh, yes. Yeah, so, so, I was going and I was leaning against the yellow wall and I had my mask on and I thought, you know, while the crowds are still coming out of the hall, I'll just take this all in, you know, thank you God for, for giving me this opportunity to have this Holy priest pray over me. I, I don't know what your plans are, but thank you, Mary, for your intercession. And with that, I started breathing in roses and the roses were unbelievable. It was like June in, um, in one of the gardens that would with that would be the ball of gardens that would have roses and i kept breathing them to the point that it almost like choked me up and i took my mask down and i started breathing it was all fresh air got a lot of fresh air into my lungs and I put my mask back on and i started breathing and all of a sudden it just started to get all these roses and i, I just felt like our blessed mother was you know standing right by me and and telling me how much she loved me as her mother. And, and I just thanked her for her intervention, whatever whatever it was that was gonna be, that that was okay. I had surrendered to her son and, and I knew that they had the best. Their divine mercy was upon me, his mercy was on me. And so uh, we went back to our place that we stayed at and we took a little rest and uh, there was going to be an adoration that night um, in Medjugorje in the evening, they had the program and uh, it was outside. So uh, I got up and I said to Michael, I said, you know, it's really strange, but my, my legs feel strong. I said, I'm looking at my ankles, are, I don't have any ankles, I'm still swollen. But I said to him, I said, you know, with my legs, my thighs being so strong, I'm just going to take these elastic bands that I've had on since June and I'm going to take them off and I'm going to put socks on because I don't know what's going on here, but I know it's the Lord and Our Lady. So let's just go over to adoration, like see it, what happens to my legs, I don't know. And so we went over, we had adoration, came back and, you know, no, the swelling hadn't gone down, everything was, but, but my legs felt stronger. So we went to bed and I woke up the next morning and whenever I used to, wake up and put my legs over. I always felt the cascade of water going from my knees to my ankles and back and forth. It was very bizarre, but it was something that I had experienced because of this amount of edema that I had. And um, basically the bottom line was there was no edema at all. And I woke up Michael and he saw it and, and he was just like, oh my gosh. And I, I thought this is my miracle that had occurred. Um, that I had been healed, that I could walk, um, and that, you know, I, I could feel stronger again, and um, maybe I could make it up to one of the cross mountains. If not that, I could make it up to the Blue Cross Mountain, so um, we actually were scheduled to go to Blue Cross Mountain, and I did get to go up to the Blue Cross Mountain, and, um, and Our Lady made her presence known there to me, too, um, me and my other secular Franciscan friend who were there, we were sitting there with Michael and, and uh, we were praying and I felt like someone was staring at me. And I looked around and the way we stare and I closed my eyes again, back, back to praying. And, and I um, looked at, felt like really strong. Somebody was looking at me and I uh, looked at my friend Denise next to me. And I said, Denise, I said, is, I said, uh, what are you looking at? And I followed her eyes and she was looking at the Blessed Mother statue. And uh, she says, oh, Marie, she says, the Blessed Mother has been smiling at us for like the last four or five minutes. <laughs> and I looked up and I, I did kind of, well, I did, I saw her smiling and it was a beautiful smile. I'll never forget the smile. And I just, you know, 
and started crying and saying, you know, thank you, Mary, for all of your intercession and for your love. You're such a loving mother uh, for all of us, not just for me. And um, and so we um, still talk about it, my friend and me, that beautiful smile that she had. And so we, we finished our trip to Medjugorje and um, it was a beautiful pilgrimage. And um, people noticed I wasn't walking with two canes. I was down to one cane and that was really just with steps. And then, and then I came home and I was down to like nothing. I walked into physical therapy and um, the physical therapist that uh, I was with, he um, had been following my legs and everything. And he his jaw just dropped and he said, you know, what happened to you? And I said, basically, I went on a pilgrimage and God has healed me for his, his loving mercy. He's healed me. And so he was kind of like, you know, looking at me like, hmm. And I said, and I said, oh, I said, you're not sure whether you believe or not. And he kind of shook his head. And so every week for the next four to six weeks, he was still with me because I was still having PT just to just be strengthened. And, um, he would come to me every week and look at my legs and say that Dima hasn't come back. I said, it, it's not going to come back because this is the way the Lord works Maureen, in his verse. When did you get back to the medical doctors and did they do any alpha feta proteins at that point in time? Uh, Dr. Uh, Saylor, I got back to three days after my pilgrimage. Now he, um, he was, amazed at the fact that my um, legs and was pretty well surprised about them, of course, but I had had blood drawn the day before because that was the way that we did it. So at that point in time, um, my um, liver enzymes, as Michael said, they had started elevating even higher. They were never normal. Uh, and the doctor, when he, looked at, we went when he looked at my legs, he said, let me go to the computer and look at something here and he pulled up my labs and his jaw dropped and he said marine he said your liver enzymes are normal but he said they're not just normal he says they're in the middle of the road they're all three of them are normal he says let me look up the alpha feta protein he looked it up and his jaw dropped again he said it's 1.3 and he said <laughs> he said you know God is, God is good. He said, praise the Lord. He said, but he says, we, we need to get MRIs. We need to see since this alpha feta protein is 1.3, what has happened inside there. And he said, um, I can get you or I can, you know, do we want to go to an oncologist? And um, I said, well, you know, however you want to do it. He said, well, I'd like you to see an oncologist. He said, so he said, let's try to get you to Sloan Kettering, which I went to. And at that time, um, the, it was really like second opinion and stuff. And I brought up all the lab work. I brought up alpha feta protein from the very beginning to the end. I brought up all the liver enzymes and all the radiology, all the radiology report at that, at that point in time that I had. And, and um, I don't did. think Sloan Kettering believed the labs tests that Maureen got after she came back from Medjugorje because they repeated them yes, up sir. there. So they what repeated they show? Them what and, did they and show? so they showed that my liver enzymes were were normal, you know, maybe one point off from what they were were like, but they're completely and normal. And my and the tumor I, marker was, was one, not one point three, it was one point four. Yeah. So he said this, you know, it was very dramatic. And yes, I had to get an MRI and and he said that um you know, he said, uh, I don't know that whether it could have been the immunotherapy. I said, well, doctor, I stopped the immunotherapy May 30th. I got an x-ray of myself in July. None of the tumors had changed from the MRI of my liver or my, or my portal vein. And I, they actually added another tumor because I ended up having one in my spine. I said, so I said, I'm a Roman Catholic and I am a great believer that uh, the divine physician has healed me. I said, because I went on a trip to Medjugorje and he just kind of looked at us. He politely dismissed. Yes. He kind of just looked. And, and so, uh, we came back and, um, I called my 
family doctor and he said, okay, he said, uh, let's have Dr. Balapar, who was my oncologist presently. And he was the first doctor that I had at the very beginning who told me I, he couldn't treat me, but he had been following me because he found me to be an interesting case, I suppose, and call up my family doctor every once in a while. So he ordered the MRI and it was now, we got back from Medjugorje September 20th. So after we got to Sloan Kettering, came back and then it was November 11th that I had the MRI of my abdomen with dye. And um, on November 14th, Dr. Balapar's office called to announce to me that I had no active cancer, that the tumors had disappeared because uh, I had so many, except for one with, that was seven centimeters is down to three centimeters. And that the tumor that was in my portal vein had actually become just a thrombus, just a clot. He said, it is no longer a tumor. It's like a blood clot. And so he said, but let's get the MRI of your spine. So on November, the next Friday, on November 18th, I had gotten an MRI of my spine and he informed me that there was no tumor. Now in July, we had seen the tumor actively because doctors had pulled it up on the computer screen and showed us it in my spine. And so uh, he he proceeded to tell me I had- There was no tumor there. And my optic nerve of my eye that was inflamed, all the inflammation was gone. And um, when they had told me that I had no active cancer on November 14th when they called with the MRI of the abdomen. I asked her to say it three times and I just started crying and I was like, praise the Lord. I said, you know, he, he we, we have a healing. He, he has healed me, he, you know, because uh, I believe it's his mercy, his divine mercy. I believe it's his mother's intercession at Medjugorje. And um, so I asked uh, Father Dan if I could use his name when I tell people because I really feel a calling, me and my husband, to, to, to uh, we feel the Holy Spirit has asked us to, to spread the divine mercy and also to just make people aware of, of Our Lady and her intercessory love and power in Medjugorje and Lourdes in, in your own home. Um, She's always available to us. And so the interesting thing is that Father Lee, Father Dan said, yes, I could use his name. And he knew Father Leon's email. So he asked me to write to him. So I wrote to Father Leon and he wrote back to me. And he said to me that, you know, this is a man who sees a lot of people and prays over a lot of people. And he said, I remember you and your husband specifically. And he said, the reason I remember too is because, and he quoted he said, I don't know, it was something inside of me while I was praying over you that said, is this, is this, is this God's instrument? Is this person God's instrument to not say, oh, Father Leon has the gift of healing, but that Our Lady in Medjugorje has, the, has the gift and is real and is, and is present. And um, so he um, gave me permission to use his name also. But can, let me jump in here. It's important that we show gratitude in good times and yes. bad, praise God, in good times and bad. Not everybody has a healing. Yes. But Michael, wasn't there an episode you went to mass when you got back and there was a scripture reading that really hit you uh, with about coming back? And oh, thinking the lepers. It, yeah. it, it basically was, and Maureen and I have incorporated this also. Uh, it was a scripture reading where Jesus cured the 10 lepers. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's one of my husband's favorites. But basically only one came back to say thank you. And I believe in reading that scripture, of course, Jesus says, we're not the other nine healed too. But basically, I think... Jesus was was very happy that this man recognized the gift of healing and to be thankful. So one of the things that Maureen and I incorporate in what we do is all those people who pray yes. for us, yeah. we ask them to turn it around, continue the prayers, but to pray in thanksgiving. Yes, praise the Lord. And, and Maureen and I always say, 
pretend you're the one cured leper that came back. Yes. So we are very thankful. And that's why we're telling everybody who we meet. Um, and everybody to, who's prayed for us. that prayed for us. Please, so please praise the Lord. And also, uh, we've been giving pamphlets of divine mercy. And some people say they already know about divine mercy. And I say, yes, but you may then hold it and give it to somebody who doesn't, who you run into. But, yeah, but we um, ask people, if if you tell uh, Maureen's story, that's wonderful. But we also ask them, if you tell the story, we're asking you also to pass on the devotion of the divine mercy. Yes. yes. Amen well, Michael to that. And Maureen, I want to thank you so much for being with me today on Mercy Unbound. Again, we aim to provide hope. Your story provides hope. Behind me is the image of divine mercy, the great physician. And mm -hmm. um, yes. And our love for the Blessed Praise Mother. The um, it's just a great story. People, I hope you enjoy the show. Please share it with your friends. Uh, yes. Never, never be afraid to let people know you're a Christian. You believe in God. We live in a world lost and searching for hope. And you too know the answer. I know the answer. And so thank you again, everyone, for joining me on Mercy Unbound. Come back and see next week's show. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for the video portion. The podcast can be heard at anchor.fm slash dr brian b r y a n thatcher t h a t c h e r and on all the major podcast forums i would love to speak at your church or conference and please consider supporting our efforts to spread the truth to a hurting world thank you again and for more information go to the website at drbrianthatcher.com